the, that the people support their army and government is absolutely true. Whatever you hear in the corporate media is the complete opposite. And on that note, what you hear in the corporate media, and I will name them, BBC, Guardian, New York Times, etc., on Aleppo is also opposite of reality. Aw, oh, man. Somebody find Gary Johnson. We're about to get real and talk about Aleppo. Today in the news, it came out that the Syrian army had liberated the city of Aleppo and was going around systematically killing people in the streets, namely civilians. Now, I'm going to talk about this story and I'm going to provide some sources here as to why I think this is not true and why we should not believe the reports coming from the Western media. Now, on December 9th, just a few days ago, independent Canadian journalist Eva Bartlett gave a 20-minute press conference as to why we should not believe the fake news coming from the Western media. But why should we believe her? What are her credentials? I've been to Syria six times since 2014, two of which were with um, international delegations and four times were independently on a visa I applied for, paid for and waited for. Um, my trips have been self-funded or fundraised and I've gone at my own risk and been able to travel freely in the country to areas I wish to travel to. I've been many times to Homs, to Malula, to Latakia, Tartus, um, Siath, Sueda, and again, Aleppo four times. So she has street cred that 99.9% .9 of other reporters don't have. She's actually boots on the ground, getting the real story from the people, watching events unfold. And she covered a lot of topics in her press conference, one of which was the ceasefires and why they don't work. Here's what she had to say. There is no faith that any of the parties that the U.S. and Western leaders who uh, have funded these terrorists, there's no faith that they can actually control the terrorists and get them to adhere to a ceasefire. And the people of Aleppo want Aleppo to be completely freed. And the last ceasefire in September was from the very um, start negated by 20 main terrorist factions who declared they were not going to participate and from the very beginning violated the ceasefire over 300 times during the duration of the ceasefire. And not only these terrorist factions, while the Syrians and while the Russians um, adhered to the tenets of the ceasefire, but the American-led coalition itself violated the ceasefire by targeting Syrian army positions in Deir ez-Zor, killing at least 83 Syrian soldiers in a prolonged attack that lasted nearly one hour and which enabled ISIS to, over, to overtake that position. Next, she implicated the so-called Free Syrian Army into a massive amount of human rights abuses, including executions, hoarding food, oppression of the citizens, blowing up hospitals. Here's just a few of the things she had to say. 2012 has been inhabited by different terrorist factions, among them al-Nusra, among them the so-called Free Syrian Army which has committed the same heinous acts of terrorism as al-Nusra, as ISIS, as Ahrar al-Sham, as Nur al-Din al zinki which beheaded a 12-year-old Palestinian child and somehow is still deemed moderate. Um, since 2012, these areas of Aleppo, which have now recently been freed, um, their occupation by these terrorist factions has meant the greater Aleppo, the 1.5 million plus population of greater Aleppo have suffered sieges denying them food and medicine. They've suffered for years a want of electricity and water, and they've suffered daily bombardment by these terrorists of mortars, of gas canister bombs, which are improvised and made locally, of water heater bombs, which are even more powerful and can level um, floors of entire buildings of conventional weapons like grad rockets supplied by the West and etc. The terrorists that declare themselves liberators of Syria do not want people to leave. They've been holding civilians hostage and if you're following reports that are not BBC and that are not New York Times, you will see countless testimonies of civilians of the hundred thousand civilians who've been liberated the last week saying thank God for the Syrian Arab army that liberated us and the terrorists were hoarding food they were preventing us from having food this is all documented the myths that have been about Aleppo and Syria in general have been that the Syrian government and army are starving the population again I refer to testimonies of people even people I met with in November I met with a family of displaced people from Al Halak, which is north of Bustan Al Pasha, which was an area, both areas occupied by terrorists. At that time, when I met them on November 10th, he told me that they had fled along with about 40 others on about 20 days prior, and that they had tried twice prior to flee, but they were prevented violently so from doing so by the terrorists that inhabited those areas. Um, this is the case, these are the testimonies coming out of Aleppo now. People saying, we tried to flee, they wouldn't let us, they shot at us. There are also videos showing people who did manage to flee coming under fire and the Syrian army actually protecting them, acting as human shields. 
So that's to say that what we've been hearing in the corporate media is not depicting an accurate uh, image of what's happening in Aleppo. The corporate media is saying that the Syrian army is attacking people, and until today, the corporate media is maintaining this, even though the exact opposite is true. Now, remember the chemical weapons that our mainstream media told us that Assad was using on his people, but then we found video of the Free Syrian Army and others using them in actuality, so of course it was a fake story. Well, here's just another source, here's just another piece of evidence that proves we were right all along. Also documented are that areas in these um, areas occupied by terrorists, including a school, um, were housing chemicals used to make uh, chemical weapons. And you could see also the gas canisters that were used to make um, explosive gas canister bombs. In fact, even when I was in Leramun, we saw a factory in one of the buildings that was used to make gas canister bombs. In Leramun, we also saw evidence of the so-called Free Syrian Army that some people say doesn't exist anymore. Um, the 16th Brigades was active there. They had a cell underground, three stories below, that was perfectly intact in spite of aerial bombings above ground. And I make this point because people talk about the destruction in Aleppo as if the physical destruction matters. It's the people that the Syrian government and the Syrian people care about. And the destruction in areas occupied by terrorists occurs because the terrorists are bunkering below ground, come up above ground, fire their bombs on civilian populations, and go back below ground. Also, the mainstream media has reported numerous times that Russia has blown up hospitals all over Aleppo and that they're committing tons of human rights abuses. Well, here's the actual skinny from the boots on the ground, Eva Bartlett, Canadian independent journalist hospitals have been, have been attacked. Well, this media is referring to the pockets of Aleppo that were occupied by terrorists. And they have manufactured stories, and I can give you a precise account. In April of this year, there was a hospital called the Al Quds Hospital, which in a concerted effort, all media said was attacked and targeted and badly damaged by either the Syrians or the Russians. In fact, the Russians had satellite imagery showing that this hospital was in the same shape that it was in in October 2015. No difference. Therefore, it was not attacked. Months later, The Guardian, which is a prominent British newspaper, newspaper actually said the Al-Quds hospital that it had alleged months prior to be attacked and destroyed was treating victims of so-called chemical weapons attacks. So even the media that is lying is inconsistent in their lies. But there have been hospitals attacked. Uh, I went to the Al-Dabit hospital, which is in Aleppo city. It's a maternity hospital. It was attacked on May 3rd, and three women were killed. You would think this would be something raised at the UN or by so-called human rights groups, but it was not. Uh, in December 2013, the Kindi hospital was attacked and destroyed. It was the largest and best cancer treatment hospital in the Middle East. It was destroyed by al-Nusra terrorist truck bombings. And in fact, in recent media reports on Aleppo, again alleging Syrian or Russian strikes on hospital, hospitals, Fox News actually had the audacity to use a photo of Al-Kindi Hospital and allege that this is in eastern areas of Aleppo that, and that this hospital had been attacked by Syrian or Russian strikes. This goes to show how much the media has been lying from the very beginning about Syria and continues to lie. So it wasn't the Russians, it was actually the terrorists using truck bombs. At the end of her press conference, she opened it up for questions and one Dutch journalist asked her or why she was calling the Western media liars. She asked him to name one Western-backed humanitarian organization that's in Syria. There are none. These organizations are relying on the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, which is based in Coventry, UK, and which is one man. Coincidentally, this is the same Syrian Observatory for Human Rights that just said every hour butcheries are carried out concerning executions of civilians being done by the Syrian army. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? You really have to admire this reporter going into a war zone with no protection, with uh, little resources, and really putting the boots on the ground and getting the straight story out so we don't have to rely on this continual fake news coming out of the Western media. Now, one final note on Russia. It just came out today. Obama crushes conspiracy. No evidence that Russia tampered with votes in election. This is something we've been saying all along. He said, we were frankly more concerned in the run-up to the election to the possibilities of vote tampering, which we did not see any evidence of, he said, and we are confident that we can guard against it. So there it is. Somebody needs to send a giant crow to Keith Oberman because you know what? That man's going to be hungry. This has been Rob Dew reporting for InfoWars.com and InfoWars Nightly News. We are at war with Russia. Or perhaps more correctly, we have lost a war with Russia without a battle. We are no longer a sovereign nation. We are no longer a democracy. We are no longer a free people. We are the victims of a bloodless coup. So far, a bloodless coup.
Three years ago, the Congress in the National Defense Authorization Act repealed the law that had been on the books for decades, barring the CIA and other agencies from engaging in domestic propaganda and disinformation. Over the weekend, they passed the Countering Disinformation and Propaganda Act that funds $160 plus million dollars to this new organization that will, quote, discover and counter with its own disinformation alternative media that they dub fake news. At the very same time, we see mainstream media claiming that Trump, myself, Tucker Carlson, you name it, are Russian agents and that the American people really wanted Hillary Clinton, but the Russians somehow hacked in and that's why Trump won. Yes, we've gotten Trump elected, but they're openly trying to overthrow that. Now more than ever, InfoWars needs your prayers and your support, and I need you to take the articles and the videos that are on the site and realize you're the reason we're having such an effect. You're the power of InfoWars. Get those articles, get those videos, get those special reports out to everyone you know. As we approach Christmas, I'm not even supposed to say that word now, our country's under such incredible thought police tyranny. It's important to be thankful, and I am extremely thankful to all of you that have prayed for us, that have spread the word about the broadcast, that have supported us, that have defended us, and that have financially supported us. We go out and search for the very best products, and we also develop amazing products and then bring them to you at very competitive prices. So when we have a sale, it really is a sale. That's why this week through the 17th, we can guarantee you'll get delivery before Christmas. Again, if you order by this Friday, the 17th, and you will get store-wide free shipping at InfoWarsStore.com. And on top of that, some of the biggest discounts of the year, 30% off Living Defense Parasite Cleanse. 50% off colloidal silver, silver bullet, and free shipping. That is just an incredible deal. Brain Force Plus, now with 20% more in each bottle and 30% off. 1995 can't beat that deal. Winter Sun, vitamin D3, 25% off. Survival Shield, X2, nascent iodine, again, an amazing 30% off. Bio True Selenium, 30% off, and that's just some of the specials. Check them out today at InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free. The great crew will answer your questions, tell you about some of the other specials and take your order if you'd like. 888-253-3139. And finally, from myself, Alex Jones and the rest of the InfoWars crew and my family, I want to wish all of you a blessed and Merry Christmas.